This is it. This is the B-29, the plane you've been waiting for. And it was worth waiting for. It's the biggest, fastest, mightiest heavy bomber in the world. It can travel farther and higher than anything else on wings. It has a pressurized cabin, permitting high altitude flight without oxygen masks. It has five remotely controlled, electrically driven turrets, each carrying twin 50s, with a 20 millimeter cannon added to the turret in the tail. Yes, the B-29 is everything you've been promised. And the pilot who flies one has an enviable job. Important, glamorous, and tough. Here's a B-29 pilot. He's measuring the distance between pin centers on the left landing gear. This part of the job isn't so glamorous. But it's the pilot's responsibility to make sure that everything on this biggest bomber in the world works properly. If you were a B-29 pilot, Here's exactly what you'd have to do before an operational flight. Check the nose wheel. See that the tires are inflated to 45 to 50 pounds per square inch. While measuring the pressure, look over the tires for general condition also. Watch out especially for cuts or signs of serious wear. One of the ground crew will replace the dust covers, but you're still responsible for his work. After you've measured the pressure in both tires, Give the gear a visual check. The strut should be clean, with a clearance between pin centers of 10 inches. And the shimmy damper must be full. That's important. Make sure the rod is almost up to the notch in the gauge on the shimmy damper reservoir. Now you can look over the engine cowlings on your way to the other main landing wheel. This gets the same inspection you've already given its mate. The co-pilot ducks into the wheel well to inspect the equipment there while you work on the wheels. Measure tire pressures again. On these tires, the pressure should be between 75 and 85 pounds per square inch. Inside the wheel well, the co-pilot examines the wires, connections, and switches. He makes sure all the cannon plugs are on tight, paying particular attention to the plugs on this motor, which opens and closes the nacelle doors, and also to the plugs of the normal and emergency landing gear motors. Then he turns around to examine his side of the strut. He looks it over and inspects the brake lines, making sure that the hose is not chafing and no fluid is leaking. Meanwhile, you're checking the clearance between pin centers again. 13 and 1 quarter inches. Right. Now, are the wheel chocks in place? One behind the inboard tire and one in front of the outboard tire, just as it should be. Next, check the cowlings inspection doors and inspection plates. You've already examined some of them, but you must be sure all of them are okay. The other members of the crew help you out with these inspections. Here, for example, a gunner tests the fastening of the top cowling. But you'll have to check the security of the other coverings, and there are a lot of them all over this ship. While you're walking along, you can examine the wing seams. Fluid leaking from them means trouble. Now to check the ailerons and trim tabs. All control surfaces and all trim tabs must be inspected. Test the tabs for excessive hinge play by shaking them and see that the gas tank caps are tightened. If there were extra fuel tanks in the bomb bays, their connections would have to be examined. But now the pilot and the co-pilot continue their tour around the plane. They have a lot to check. Hatches, windows, control surfaces, trim tabs, inspection plates and doors. But the pilot and co-pilot aren't the only crew members with inspections to make. The gunners, for example, besides helping the pilot check the airplane, must also be sure the guns and gun cameras will work properly. They must inspect all five turrets in the same way they're now examining this lower rear turret. After they have the dome and gun cover removed, they see that the ammunition moves freely in the chutes and is correctly loaded. The guns just don't fire with the cartridges in backwards. They also check the safety wiring on the gun mounting bolts, up in there. Then the gun charging switches are put on reset. That conserves the CO2 pressure, which automatically charges the guns. Finally, the gun camera is inspected. Enough film, speed set at 16 frames per second, lens adjusted to the brightness of the day, and the interval control put at the desired number of seconds and turned on. And this turret is all right. The dome and gun cover can be replaced. The tail turret is checked by the tail gunner. But again, the pilot is responsible. If the guns fail, he gets the blame. 
So he watches the tail gunner as the Shatterall feed mechanism is inspected. Now the other gunners only have to lock the latches. Elevation latch locked. Azimuth latch locked. The doors are shut and fastened, and the gunners can go to another turret. And there's still more work to be done. Each engine must be pulled through 15 blades, with only two men per blade. The engineer takes care of that. He sits at his position, making sure that all switches are off, while the four engines are pulled through. And now the co-pilot puts on his clothing and collects his equipment before joining the rest of the crew for inspection. Notice that the crew members wear fatigues while making their inspections and change into flight clothing only when they are ready to enter the plane. The examination of the exterior of the airplane is completed. So the crew can fall in for the check of their personal equipment. That's the last item of the before entering the airplane part of the procedure. And it's strictly the pilot's job. Your job. You are responsible for the men as well as the plane. If they fail, you're at fault. Each crew member must have his electrically heated flying clothing, parachute, oxygen mask, knife, a quart of water, and may west. Steel helmets and flak vests are already inside the ship at the positions. Apparently these men are completely equipped. But don't think they only have to climb into the ship and fly away. There's a lot yet to be done. Let's go along with the pilot again and see what he has to do to take a B-29 into the air. Yes, this is the airplane that you've been promised. Now it's up to you to weld this airplane and its crew into a single irresistible instrument of destruction. That can be your promise to us.